Monsters University came out in 2013, was the prequel to Monsters, Inc. I'm reviewing this because uh, I, I want to talk about both these movies before the new Disney Plus series, Monsters at Work, drops on Disney Plus in July next month. Um, and I, you know, I want to have these out before then. I'm excited to talk about that series. I will be talking about that show week to week as it releases. Um, yeah, but I wanted to talk about this movie. I'm, I'm a big fan of Monsters, Inc., if you couldn't tell from that review. Um, I saw this movie back in 2013. I was like... Um, it, hmm, okay. So I was about 10 when this movie came out. And uh, I loved it. <laughs> uh, but now I don't because this movie is like fun for kids. Like there's a lot of great humor and animation in it. We're, we're, gonna, we're just gonna get this out of the way. I, you know, every Pixar review tells you the animation's good and they don't really talk about much else to the actual like story or anything like that. They mostly talk about the animation. The animation is great here. It's very well detailed, amazing, you know, phenomenal. Okay, let's move on from that. Um, I think what bothers me about this movie is, like, when I was a kid, I didn't really, you know, I wasn't into, like, college movies, you know, the type of, like, movies like Animal House and things like that. Now that I'm older, I've seen those types of movies. And so now when I watch this movie, it's just, it's just a generic college movie. And... There, there's good moments in it. The voice acting here is once again great. You know, Billy Crystal and John Goodman's friendship really do carry this movie. But it's also like they don't because a lot of the movie they're not friends, which is such a like a generic kind of college movie trope. And it's just a lot of this movie is that. And it's also like there's no reason for this movie to be made. Um, it's very forgettable. You know, it, it, it doesn't even make sense within the timeline of the original movie. There's, like, literally a line in the first movie where Mike and Zelda are like, you know, we've known each other since, like, the fourth grade. And they never explain how they knew each other from the fourth grade, but somehow are just meeting each other for the first time in college. This movie was very obviously a cash grab. And as a cash grab, it's decent, you know, it's a very decent movie. Like, I, it's watchable. It doesn't, like... It's not one of those cash grabs where it, like, ruins the first movie or something. I guess by that... Except for, like, that one continuity error I just mentioned. But, like, that's, like, a minor thing. I've watched the movie five times and not even noticed that line. So it doesn't really matter. Essentially, this movie is just, like, a really watchable cash grab. And... It's fun at times, has some great moments, like the ending I think is really great, but it's just like when you when you factor in that this movie does not make sense to the original in any way, um, the movie is just a generic college movie. I think most people even forgot this was like a Pixar movie majority of the time because it's just kind of like, it's just kind of there. I don't think anyone was like, Let's make a prequel to Monsters, Inc. I think more people wanted a sequel to Monsters, Inc. Because, you know, there was there's more story to be told there than here. In fact, um, there was a, a long time ago, uh, Pixar was not owned by Disney. They were just, um, they were just, well, basically, P Disney was just funding Pixar's movies and licensing them out. So, you know, that's kind of what they were at. And with the... The, with Cars, I believe, it was to be like their last movie um, with Disney, and then they and then Disney was gonna keep all the rights to like their movies, like Toy Story and stuff, which Pixar didn't want, um, and and so Pixar was pretty upset about this. Disney was trying to start an animation group called Circle Seven, which was gonna make sequels to all their Pixar movies. So you're gonna have like a Monsters Inc. Two, and the and the plot of that movie was it called. Uh, it was called Monsters, Inc. Lost in Scare Dice. And it was about them going through, Mike and Sully going through the door to find Boo. And they can't find her, so they end up trapped in the human world. They go on this adventure 
only to find Boo in her old age, and and, and and then kind of realizing, hey, she's not doing so good or something like that. I think she was gonna like die in the original script. I don't know, <laughs> which I think would have made a good sequel. But I think the problem with that sequel is now like, if they ever did that now, it would be terrible because, well, it's spoiled now. You know that you're gonna they're gonna find her old. You know, but uh, I think that would have been a better sequel. It would have fleshed out the story and done more. And it, that's what people wanted. I I don't think it should have happened like that. We should we should not have had like Circle Seven animation or whatever, because uh, you know we knew that you know Disney came out with Chicken Little and stuff like that. Their team was not very efficient with um, their animated catalog. Um, when it comes to CG, they were still very. Un unexperienced they were cool they were good at blending stuff with 2d because that's what they were good at, at the time but they got better and better at it now they're great at it uh animation wise but you know it's like it just would have worked out well their team was still figuring stuff out and it's good that now pixar is just kind of owned by disney though i prefer them to now be their own independent company they could totally do that but i don't think that's ever going to happen